Hi everyone. We're going to continue talking about simplifying expressions, uh, but get a little bit more complicated with the problems I give you. Um, so you'll see some fractions or some longer e expressions here with more steps. So we're going to start with the fractions. And the one thing I want to say before we get started is just because it looks different doesn't mean you treat it differently. So when we look at number one, I want to ask you what you would do if this was 37D plus 22D. Well, you'd say I have 37 Ds and I add 22 Ds. How many Ds do I have? Well, 37 plus 22, that's 30 plus 20 is 50. 7 plus 2 is 9. So that would be 59 Ds. Okay, that problem is not too bad. But I find that when we look at a fraction, um, you know, it's a little bit uglier and we start to want to treat it differently. Okay, however, when you're adding fractions, um, it's not really any different. But first, I guess I should kind of recap how you even add fractions. So let's start with something a little bit simpler. Let's say you have 1 eighth and you add 2 eighths. What do you get? These two fractions have what's called a common denominator. So this is the denominator and it's both 8. So they have the exact same denominator. That's what a common denominator is. Okay, and when fractions have a common denominator, you can add them. If they don't have a common denominator like this, we'll have to do something, but in this case, we can add them. So really what this says is I have 1 eighth and I had 2 eighths. How many eighths do I have? Well, now I have 3 eighths. Okay, so that's how you're going to add fractions. And although number 1 has a variable as the denominator, it's still a common denominator. What this problem says is I have 37 d's and I add 22 of them. I don't know how to say that. How many do I have? Okay, so same idea. Really, you just add the uh, numerator, which is the top of this fraction here. Um, so I say I have 3 eighths. I'm going to do the same thing here. 37 plus 22 is 59 over D. Describes um, how many you're dividing by. Okay, so this problem, although it looks uglier and you have a variable in the denominator, very similar to this one. Um, you don't treat it differently just because it's a variable instead of a number. Okay, that would be your final answer. If you have a common denominator, it's that simple. Okay, if you don't have a common denominator, then we have to do something a little bit more. I have one-fifth x and I add two-thirds x. How many x's do I have? You know, I should have mentioned this first, but I can add these together because they are like terms. And the reason they're like terms is because they both have an x as their variable. And the one above was like terms because they were both dividing by the same variable, which is d. And they're both being divided by that, so it made them like terms. Anywho, I have one-fifth x and I add two-thirds x. So again, this problem would be very similar if I said, okay, what if I have one x and I had two x's? You just add them together. The only thing that makes this difficult here is that you have to add fractions. Okay, so I'm just going to separate that for a second and say, what would you do if there were no variables? How would you add one-fifth plus two-thirds? The problem we run into in this problem is they don't have that common denominator. One is a five. One is a three. Okay, so what you need to do when you're adding fractions without a common denominator is you need to write an equivalent fraction that gives them a common denominator. Okay, the easiest way to do that is say, okay, what's the smallest number that both five and three divide evenly into? And if you're unsure, the easiest way to do is to multiply them. Um, five times three is 15. 15 can be divided by both five and three. So realistically, one-fifth is equal to how many fifteenths? Well, in order to get from 5 to 15 there, you have to multiply this by 3. And to keep a fraction equivalent, you need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing. Because really then you're just multiplying by 1 because 3 divided by 3 is 1. So 3 times 5 gives us 15. 3 times 1 gives us 3. Which means that one-fifth is equal to 3 fifteenths. And if you don't believe me, you can try and go forwards and simplify that. Okay, divide each of these by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So that just proves that 1 fifth is equal to 3 fifteenths. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this problem with a common denominator. So now we know 1 fifth is the same as 3 fifteenths. Okay, we need to do the same thing for 2 thirds. We need them to have a common denominator, so we want 2 thirds to now have a denominator of 15. So 2 thirds is equal to what over 15? 
Well, what do you need to multiply 3 by to get 15? That'd be 5. But whatever you do to the bottom, you need to keep it balanced and do to the top. 5 times 2 is 10. And again, if you don't believe me but that they're equivalent fractions, so equivalent meaning they're the same value but written in different ways, you can simplify this fraction by dividing by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 2 thirds is the exact same thing as 10 fifteenths. Okay, so all you did was convert to an equivalent fraction. Hopefully that was a review, but if you find that challenging, let me know. I'd be happy to go over it. Okay, so 1 fifth is 3 fifteenths. 2 thirds is 10 fifteenths. Now that they have this common denominator, you can add them. So I have 3 fifteenths and I have 10 fifteenths. How many fifteenths do I have? I have 13 fifteenths. Okay, but remember, it was actually one-fifth x plus two-thirds x. So the question really is, how many x's do I have? Okay, so really this should be an x, 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 x. Now I have 13 fifteenths x. Just to rewrite that final answer. Okay, so very similar to adding like terms that aren't fractions. If you had one x and you had two x's, you'd have three x's. If I had one-fifth and I add two-thirds x, you now have 13 fifteenths x. Okay, I'm going to leave number three for you to try on your own just to practice fractions. And again, if you find fractions challenging, please let me know and I'd be happy to go over them further. Okay, so that's a little step up above the last video just because I threw in some fractions. What I want to do now is, you know, what do I do when a problem has a few more steps or looks a little bit more complicated? So let's start with number four. And when the problems have a lot of operations and steps like this, I just want to remind us about our order of operations, which is PEMDAS. Okay, and we're just going to follow this. Even though they're not just numbers, we also have variables, the same thing applies. So first you would try to simplify anything in parentheses. Okay, so I look at this and see if I can simplify, but those are not like terms because one is a constant and one has a variable. So you can't simplify that. Same thing here, this is a z and a y, so you can't simplify anything inside the parentheses. So that step is done. Okay, next would come exponents. Ooh. Okay. There are no exponents here because there's no like little number on any of the terms. So we don't have to do anything with exponents. Then we travel over to multiplication and division. And that is what we're going to do first. Okay, remember when you have a number in front like this, okay, that just means to multiply when there's no symbol in between. And this is that distributive property. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is multiply. And we're going to multiply to everything in the group because it's grouped together in parentheses. So 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. 5 times 4z, well, it's just you have 4z 5 times, or 4 times 5 is 20z's. Okay, so we've done our multiplication division here. We want to do the same thing because you have multiplication again here. Right, if the 3 is written there, it's just 3 times this. So we're going to need to multiply that to both terms. Now, if it's me, I'm going to look at this like I'm multiplying negative 3. I think that's the easiest way to look at it because, um, you know, subtracting 3 means debt. Negative 3 means debt means the same thing. So I'm going to do negative 3 times 2z. So 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 3 times 2 then is negative 6, but we're talking about z's. Okay, negative 3 times y. Remember, if there's no coefficient in front of the y, it just means you have one y. So 3 times 1 is 3. Um, but you have negative 3 times negative y, so negative 1y. Negative times a negative is a positive. Um, so negative 3 times negative 1y would be positive 3y's. Okay, so now I've done my multiplication and division. Um, my next step in PEMDAS then is addition and subtraction. And that's where you just combine your like terms. Uh, you add and subtract what you can. So I notice I have z's here that I can combine. Um, I don't have any other y or any other constant, so really the only thing I combine is those two terms. So negative 25 is going to stay the same. I have 20 z's and I take away 6 z's. How many z's do I have? I subtract 6 z's. Um, so 20 minus 6 is 14 z. And the 3y, there's nothing that you can combine with that, so that's just going to stay 3y. Okay, so you've cleaned that up as much as you can. There's no equal sign, so you can't solve anything. You're just getting a more simple expression, and this would be your final answer. And we're going to do number five together as well, at least part of number five. Uh, and the reason is I threw something a little bit different here. Okay, just want to remind us that we're going to work in PEMDAS order. 
Okay, so we don't have anything within the parentheses to simplify. Um, so with PEMDAS, there's nothing really we can do there. We have this exponent, but there's nothing we can simplify. So we're going to kind of think about that later. Um, next, we're going to multiply. And here's where you see the multiplication. And this is why this problem's a little bit differently. I want to talk about what 3x times x is. Okay, 3x itself really means 3 times x. And 3x then times x, well, when you put the parentheses there, that just means multiplication. So this really means 3 times x times x. And what is x times x? This is something that students often uh, get confused with because x plus x is 2x. But x times x is repeated multiplication. Repeated multiplication translates to an exponent. So x times x is actually x squared. These a square means to multiply x two times, and this means to multiply x two times. So this term would really simplify to be 3x squared. If you have any questions on this, please ask it in the video. Okay, so this problem translate into this. And now from here, I'm actually going to have you complete the rest of this on your own um, by combining like terms and doing your addition and subtraction. The key is which are the like terms and which are not. Okay, so make sure you embed your answer. And that's all I wanted to go over in this video. So just a few more challenging examples of how to simplify expressions. Um, still combining like terms, still applying distributive property, uh, but a little bit more difficult to look at. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day.